So hello guys, welcome to another video. So this is going to be a different video. Um, I actually wanted to share my experience with the Rio Gene 3.5 also and to give you some tips and like if you're thinking on how to fold it, maybe I can uh, try to help you out. So, but first off, uh, let me actually show you in video because I don't think I've ever done it. I've only posted some pictures of it, but here it is in video. I think it looks good. <laughs> Tell me your opinion. Let me show you the head a little bit better. So yeah, so yeah. So as you all know, Ryujin is a complex model, but it's also one of the most cooling, one of the most cool origamis, and it's an origami that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, so that's why I decided to make this video on it, and in order to actually give you some advice and what I can tell you by. Uh, from my experience on folding it, uh, I'm gonna divide this um, this video in four parts. So first of all, I'll talk about the paper. So what paper you should use, what I used, pros, cons, whatever. Then I'm actually gonna talk about pre-creasing, the importance of it, and uh, how it affected the origami that I did. And next up, folding. So basically, just the whole collapse test folding and then and also some shaping on it as well and also finally my experience in general so yeah so first off paper uh, as you may know I used craft paper which is a common paper for this uh, origami and I'll actually show you where I got it I'll post I'll put a video rolling in the background where I got it um, so in, in the website, they clearly say that the origami is or it's ideal for the Ryu Jin. But and I have I still have a piece of paper of the rest of the paper that I got, and here it is. So I was kind of disappointed by the paper I got. I mean, it's clearly good because it's really thin, it's very strong, and it's good for this origami. But as you can see. Like, this is the paper from an origami shop, so it's not just random paper, so, but it has these drawings on it, it has these lines here, I hope the camera can pick it up, but I think it can. And they don't look that, uh, that bad, I mean, you, can, you cannot see them here, except maybe like a bit on the tail, you can see sometimes, and if you look really closely on the scales, you can actually see as well some of them. I mean. From the final product, you can tell the difference. But one thing first. First off, it's I. I mean, I don't get the point of having this um, this line since this is specifically an origami paper. So why? Secondly, uh, although they don't uh, show up on the final, they are very distracting with the pre-creasing because you can actually. So if you start folding the line here. You, and since they are, um, they have a right angle, you can actually confuse uh, confuse them with the grid line, and that happened to me a lot. So it's quite confusing. So that's one. Uh, and the other thing is, I actually ordered um, so two types of paper. So actually, not two types, but two uh, sizes, I guess. So I actually I ordered five uh, sheets of one meter by one meter paper, and then I ordered. Um, a roll which is not on the website I think for now but it was um, four and a half meters by one and a half meter I think yeah so my idea was to actually cut that roll in three parts and from there connect the three parts all together and then you get one uh, one and a half meter by one and a half meter but what I received was actually a roll that was about four and a half uh, meters, and in that, 
this is how they cut it uh, in the end. So it's completely random and obviously my idea of making that uh, one and a half meter by one and a half meter paper from the roll completely vanished from this. <laughs> uh, so what I decided to do was actually um, use a square use a square of uh, uh, one meter by one meter and then put a roll here so so it was pretty much, the roll was yeah, sorry I forgot I was telling the wrong so the roll was for uh, three wait one and a half meters long by 50 centimeters I don't know what what the hell I was doing what the hell I was saying uh, so yeah one and a half meters and 50 cent uh, no wait Okay, I'll put. <laughs> oh my God, I'm so confused. I'll put the dimensions uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the video. So basically, what I ended up doing was using one of the squares and then actually adding two little uh, stripes here to make a bigger square. So it it, it was about uh, one meter by one and a half meter by one and a half meter. Um. So what? So yeah, basically that's kind of uh, that's not that optimal because I had to glue the paper and that make sure that it was perfect so that gets me to another point which is gluing the paper together um, so you should I'm not that good or I don't have that much experience on making paper and gluing paper together I've, I used white glue mixed with some water but that's not ideal because it gets really uh, thick so it's the, the paper starts to bend so that kind of influenced my brake racing especially on the grid uh, but yeah but yeah maybe some divisions were not actually were not all perfect but that didn't influence the the final product um, so yeah another thing I want to talk about is different types of paper so yeah I used craft paper but you can also use uh, tissue paper I believe with the MC glue I've never tried it so I'm just saying uh, I don't believe tissue f uh, uh, f tissue paper with the foil with foil paper uh, would be never, so yeah so basically not not uh, so tissue foil you can use tissue foil with with MC glue uh, but not tissue paper so tissue what I mean by tissue paper is having a tissue foil and then foil paper um I believe that I hope I'm not mistaking the names <laughs> sorry uh, you know what I mean so yeah I believe that's too thick uh, so a paper with uh, like uh, 20 30 maybe too much 20 grams uh, per squared uh, meter or inch 20 GSM uh, maybe the best one. I think this one's this one is around 20 GSM. So yeah. Um, so yeah. In terms of paper, that's it. So now I want to talk about pre creasing, and let me tell you, pre crease. <laughs> okay, don't rush pre creasing. Pre creasing is very very important. Um, I have I have here the crease pattern of this. Uh, of this origami, so the region. So this is a crease pattern that actually has the difference between mountain and valley folds. But I don't know. I actually don't know where I found it. But I'm pretty sure if you search for it, you can find it. Um, but I, if you find this CP, don't trust it a hundred percent. I know there are some wrong, some things wrong here. So always uh, trust in yourself as well. Okay. So don't fo blindly follow this. But as I was saying, so I actually pre creased every single line here. Okay, including the scales. For my region um, uh, 2.1, yes, I didn't pre-crease like these diagonal lines here on the scale and it was a lot harder to make them. Okay, so yeah, take your time, pre-crease every single line and it will definitely help. Um, and yeah, you, I, I can actually show you, I have some test folds that I want to show you after, but I can show you right now. Okay, yeah, so basically this is a test fold of the bottom parts of the scales and I actually, so here you can see this is the scale, this I pre-creased, this side 
and the squares all look the same size, all good. But then if you turn around, I did not pre-crease this side. Okay, so as you can see, this line, this part's a lot bigger, this is a lot smaller. So it's very consistent, so it's a lot easier if you just pre-crease everything, including the scales, okay? You don't need to pre-crease the shape of the scales. Um, but yeah, and that's it for pre-creasing. Okay, so next up I want to talk about folding the, folding the actual origami. But before you actually start folding the origami, I want to talk about, again, the, import the importance of test folding. So this is all the test folds that I made for this origami. And, okay, maybe they were too much, but honestly, I don't regret it. Um, this is clearly the origami that I did most, pre -fold, most test folds, but it, it's an origami that I wanted to do a long time, so I wanted to make sure I, I had it right. So basically I have tail, tail with some scales, another tail, yeah, I folded a lot of tails. Uh, this is just the bottom part, which I actually used for the tutorial I made on the, on the base, so I can link it down below as well if you want to see it. Um, so tails, so this is actually the leg section here, okay, so this is that then you have here with the dorsal spines here okay and we have a leg we have the head I only fold it I didn't fold it all the way but I just test fold the leg collapsing this crease pattern and folding kind of uh, the details and I have here also the um, head neck connection okay so yeah, test fold, the Ryujin 3.5 and the 2.1 are, and all the others in between, are very modular, which means that you can actually just cut out the section and crease that, so cut out this part and fold the head, cut out this part and fold the tail, cut out this part and fold the scales and the legs. So it's really simple, or and this part as well, and fold the head neck connection. So it's really easy to actually just fold specific parts of the origami, and in the end, all you have to do is just put them together in a giant paper. So that's pretty much it, okay? There's not that much to, to the real gene, sorry to say that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so speaking of which, collapsing the origami. So collapsing, I'm gonna tell you, the hardest part is going to be either the head or uh, the head neck connection, okay? So it's very important, especially this part. I think. I think this part is it was the hardest for me to collapse, uh, so make sure you take your time. Uh, this is an overall overall tip. Don't rush anything, okay? Um, uh, I, I can already talk about shaping. So yeah, in terms of shaping, this is mainly uh, the the tip that I gave you is mainly important. This part, so don't rush it, okay? Take your time. Everyone knows that shaping the Ryujin 3.5 is time consuming because you have to shape. Uh, the individual scales, every single one of them, and there are, I, I mean, there are a lot of them, okay? I can actually, sh I, I wrote in the background here the time that I took, I took about 20 hours shaping scales, okay? I, I can actually show you, so basically, I took about 6 hours pre-creasing, um, then about 5 hours making the legs and scales, which is where I started, which is the first video of the time-lapse, then I took about yeah 20 hours doing just shaping the um, the scales of the body and shaping the origami in general. So not counting with the with the with the, the scales was about 15 hours. Uh, I didn't count the time I took collapse. So basically, I took 75 hours in total, which is not that bad, I think. But again, it's not a competition. Okay, I don't care if you take. A year making the Ryujin. If you make it, you make it, and no one can say otherwise. Can say you didn't, okay? Um, so yeah, as I was saying, shaping the hardest part again for me. The scales are very easy to simple. Just, just they are just very very boring to do. So what I just what I did was actually um, just sat down for an hour a day, shape some scales. I even made a video on how to shape scales more efficiently. If you wanna. Uh, check it out, I'll leave a link in the description. Um, and yeah, I just sat down an hour, no rush, shaping scales and yeah, things were moving. Uh, so 
that gets me to another question which is, which is shaping the head now this was hard <laughs> okay I'm not gonna lie I had if you if you take a look at the time lapse the last time lapse that I did I'm gonna link them all below the last time lapse that I did um, most uh, half of the video so the last time lapse is just shaping the overall model without counting the scales and um, half of the video or more than half of the video is just shaping the head okay shaping the head took me about five hours I'm, I'm saying random not random numbers I'm not, I'm not I didn't count exactly but I, I would say five hours okay it was really really hard and but I'm proud of it and I, I remember being shaping, uh, I remember as I was shaping the head, just thinking, "Wow, how how the hell am I gonna get this to look like a decent head?" And honestly, I I worked on it for like 30 minutes. I I saw no progress. I worked for another 30 minutes. I saw no progress. But what I learned is that you can't actually um, see it that way. Okay, so you're not you're not gonna see a huge progress from one uh, fold to the other to the other okay it's just about keep improving keep gluing stuff that you already know where you want to be keep folding and eventually you'll get to the final product okay so basically don't rush it don't worry if you're not uh, uh, if you're taking too too much time or something like that okay uh, and I believe that's the end that's what I wanted to say oh I mean yeah for shaping so yes you have to use a little okay it, it doesn't make it less of an origami if you use glue. The rear gene is designed for it to use glue, as otherwise you cannot wrap the body uh, and connect the two, the two halves, which is here. And, and show you. So here is the, where the two halves connect. I think it's pretty seamless. You can see here a little opening, but I think it looks good. Uh, so yeah, you have to use glue. Uh, I also recommend you use a wire on the inside to give the, um, the body the shape that you want and yeah don't be afraid of using glue <laughs> so yeah so finally I want to talk about my overall experience with this origami so I don't know if you know but it's an origami that I've been wanting to do ever since I laid my eyes on it uh, and I believe that's the same case for most of you because this is honestly it's one of the best looking origamis, not not just from uh, the which I made, but from all that I know. And I think most of you can agree with that. And it's also one of the most uh, uh, difficult, or people see it as one of the most difficult. So that, that this makes this origami, the, the two, those two reasons make this origami very desirable for advanced origamists. Um, so yeah, I've been wanting to do this for a long time and I just decided, well, let me just, I, I think it's time, so what I decided to do is just let me test fold. The main reason that was uh, keeping me from doing this RGM in the past was actually the legs. I had a lot of trouble uh, figuring out, like this part here, let me see, this part here. Um, so I just said, okay, I'm going to try this again and I'm going to do it. And yeah, that's what I did. I just folded the legs and test folding a bit more, test fold the tail again, everything. And yeah, I decided to, to go for it. So basically, in terms of um, difficulty of this origami, um, I mean, if you look at it, it looks impossible. It's, it looks completely impossible. But let me tell you, it's not, okay? <clears throat> if you've done the Rio Gene 2.1, which is which for itself it's not that hard, this origami is just slightly harder. Okay, the only difference, big difference in this origami is the legs. Okay, the head is also more complex, but not that complex. I think it's pretty easy to do the head. And uh, the the shaping of the scales, uh, it's easy. The le the legs itself. Um, are also quite simple so no weird folds here but this part so this connection here and this part as well it can be a bit tricky okay this is the hard I'm not saying the hardest part because I think the hardest part or it's going to be this part here as well but these two are the main difference from 
uh, the 2.1 to the 3.5 because this part already exists in the 2.1. Uh, I, I mean, mine doesn't look that well uh, actually. I don't know, you can see. It actually doesn't look that well. Here, look at these scales, they're not that well. But, well, that's, that's what that's what it, what it is. <laughs> um, so yeah, difficulty, I don't know, I, I, there's no scale, I, I don't think there's a scale for uh, for uh, assigning a difficulty to the, to the origami, but I would say it's probably one of, it's not the most difficult that I did, it's one of the most, mainly because it's very time consuming and you have to work with a big paper but I'm definitely sure that if you, if you can do the region 2.1 and if you test fold the legs, which is the main difference, you can clearly do this origami. Uh, last point, so my satisfaction, so my, I don't know, my opinion with this origami. So yeah, I'm very pleased with it. I'm very happy that I actually managed to do the origami. Like I said, I've been wanting him to, been wanting to do for a very, very long time and I'm happy just to pass down the hallway and just look at it and just, damn, I made that. <laughs> I think it's quite awesome. Um, hopefully you guys can do yours soon or if you've done, you also feel the same way. Um, and yeah, so I wanted to leave you with some tips, some overall view of this, overall uh, opinion of this, of this video. So basically, if you're going to do the Ryujin, if you're pl planning on, on doing it, first off, don't rush it, take your time, test fold, practice everything, don't collapse in a rush, okay? There's no time limit. Uh, second of it, second of all, um, make sure you are uh, experienced, or make sure you're ready, basically, okay? And by that I mean, Make sure you know what you have to do, how you're going to do it. So basically, test all everything, and and eventually, I'm pretty sure that you'll be able to do it. Okay. So basically, what I mean is, if you if you're not uh, experienced in folding crease patterns, maybe <laughs> this is not the first. This is not the best option for you. But maybe this can be a target for you. I mean, so practice crease pattern starts by the easiest rear jeans like the one uh, 1.2 I believe then the from the 1.2 to the 2.1 it's a big difference but you can actually do it and then I know I mean overall in origami you can't rush things okay um, I f when I first started folding crease patterns I had like so I, I went from folding diagrams to crease patterns and the distance between in time the distance between those two, those two points was huge because I reached the, like the diagrams and I could fold the hardest diagrams and I, and I thought, well, now what? I have no more diagrams to fold. I can't fold crease patterns. And I just tried and tried and I couldn't do anything, okay? And don't worry, everyone, including me, uh, goes through that thing. It's completely normal. Crease patterns is a whole new world. But if you practice enough, you'll be able to do it, trust me, okay? Just start with easy ones and then uh, progress more advanced and you'll be able to fold them uh, by yourself in no time. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's a bit different from what I used to do, but uh, I think it's useful um, to share this opinion with you and hopefully I helped some of you. And yeah, so actually, one thing, if you want to see more photos of it, I have the Flickr account. I have a Flickr account in which I have more photos of it. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you f so much for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, leave a, leave a comment and I'll answer them as soon as possible. Okay, bye. Thanks.